Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota, and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. If you're watching at 11 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday, what day is it today? October 11th, 2023, you're with me live and you can go ahead and chat with each other while we're live. That's the fun of it. Um, it's, it's great to see all the conversation going on. You guys are getting to know each other. This is so great. Um, and if you're not watching live, that's totally fine too. I'd love you to comment either way. Comments get you entered into prize drawings. And um, a big welcome to Trisha Josephs on YouTube and Lisa Marshall on Facebook. Those two gals are my moderators. They help me out. They're the ones answering questions. They check the comments during the live and they're there to help people guide you in the right direction, all that kind of thing. Like if you're wondering what I meant by something or if you need a product referred to or something. My hand is doing better. Thank you for asking. Um, yes, I'll, you'll be able to see uh, what kind of contraption I have on my, on my right hand now to keep the incision area protected and the surgery area, whatever. But right now I want to get started on crafting because I am crafting again. It's so fun to be able to use my right dominant hand and get into my craft room. It's just so, to me, it's therapeutic. It's relaxing. I, I love it. Um, the first time I was able to craft after the surgery, just, I don't know, it was just so, so wonderful. Um, I can't even explain it. But um, yeah, so let's get going. We're going to do some Christmas cards today. I'm going to dive into a simple project. This is something that beginning crafters can definitely do. Um, our kits in our kits collection, we have lots of them by the way, are easy enough for beginners, but also beautiful and intriguing enough for advanced and um, you know crafters who've been around for a while to enjoy as well if you need to make a card pretty quick or you're looking to do alternates like I'm gonna do. I'm just changing the kit up a little bit though. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Christmas kit, it's called Christmas Everywhere because it has trees um, from not only the cooler or colder areas of the country during Christmas time, but it also has a cactus and a palm tree that are decorated with Christmas lights. And um, that's why it's named Christmas Everywhere. But I'm gonna take this kit that creates nine cards as intended, and I'm gonna more than double it. So I'm first gonna double the cards, and I'm gonna show you the extra pieces and what you could do with those extra pieces. The reason why I like to double kits is for one, you get more bang for your buck, but two, this is one of those kits that comes with a stamp set and ink. And if you really like the cards in the kit, it's really difficult to justify buying multiple kits. Um, and you want to do that at Christmas time. You want to have lots of cards, right? <laughs> but it's hard to justify it when you're going to get extra stamp sets and extra little ink pads called ink spots. So I'm going to share with you how to still keep the cards looking pretty close to the way the kit was intended, um, but still double and more. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for um, liking, subscribing. I'm seeing some of your comments as they're rolling through. And let's see if Rachel can craft on her own. Last week we had Terry. This week I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> um, again, it's Wednesday, October 11th. 2023. What else did I not mention before we start? I don't have a supply list for you. Um, the reason why is because I only bought one of these kits and so I don't have all the cards finished to photograph ahead of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some and then I'm going to quickly photograph them and then put them into my blog post and my PDF. So I'm only going to look at the measurements, but they're pretty simple. I think you'll be able to follow along. If you have this kit, I, I really feel like you could do it. So let's give it a go and forgive my hand. Um, I do have a little bandage over it so you don't see the um, healing incision area. You know, it's not really fun to look at that stuff. This here is my, my brace. It helps to keep this finger um, from bending as far. Yes, that is the one that got injured. Um, no jokes, you guys, okay? Because I don't swear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do profanity, but um, yeah, it's just, uh, it happens to be that finger. So, um, but we just keep it from bending any further than the other ones. It's, it's kind of cool. And um, yeah, so here we go. 
Uh, this is the kit. This is the kit. It's called Christmas Everywhere. And right now you can see that the trees are, you know, fir trees, pine trees, um, those kind of evergreens, um, you know, the ones that are uh, typical Christmas trees. But this kit also contains some little die cut pieces that you can use if you live in warmer climates. So if you live in the desert, you've got cactus trees and oops, sorry, I'm trying to hold them all. I'll just put them on my desktop and zoom in. How does that sound? Um, and then we have the trees that are palm trees, forgive my arm, um, for the areas that again are warmer areas, but maybe closer to the water. So let's set those aside. Those will be used later. Those are my extras. I, um, I, I did use um, palm trees on a couple of the cards, actually a palm tree and a cactus already, but I'm choosing to just put those aside and use them as extras because I live in Minnesota. So um, my Christmas is definitely cooler weather. Oh, by the way, the kits do come with full color um, direction pamphlet type things. Um, and the wording is not real strong. In fact, I want to say that it's only math that they share. Um, yeah, there's not even any words on here. So that um, the directions are easy to translate to different languages. This stamp set, as I mentioned, comes with a stamp set. I've already peeled all the stamps off to use them um, uh, for the cards. And so this is the stamp set. Uh, hang on a minute. We're getting some natural light coming in, so it's causing some shadows, I think. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but um, this is the, these are the images that you get with this stamp set. So you can see it, you can put together warm wishes, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas. You get envelopes also. So this kit comes with nine envelopes because again, it's intended to make nine cards. You could totally use the lining of these, car, uh, of these envelopes to make even more cards because they're red all the way through. So you've got some designer paper if you want to make um, your kits go even further than what I'm sharing today. But again, I wanted to keep it very close to what the kit cards already look like. This is the block. You get a clear block. You get um, an ink pad. And so again, if you just want to invest in one kit, follow along with me today and let's see what we do. Um, the Lost Lagoon pad, by the way, does come in the larger size if you'd like to invest in that. This is the larger one. It opens like a compact. <laughs> we go a little slower nowadays. So there's my Lost Lagoon ink. We're going to need that. It also comes with the adhesive that you're going to need. And so I've already done some assembling of some cards. So we're just going to go ahead and continue using these dimensionals. But I'm also bringing in what's called mini dimensionals. These are just a little bit tinier. Um, you can cut down larger dimensionals if you want to. And then some extra adhesives. I'm going to be using multi-purpose liquid glue along with my precision tip bottle. And I've got some tools, basic tools like a scissors, um, we call them paper snips. The take your pick tool is great for, you know, handling little tiny objects, um, like um, if you're going to do embellishments or you want to pick up a tiny piece of paper, it's got a pokey end, it has a spatula end, and it also comes with some, um, I forget what they're called now, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, let me, let me show you. I always forget to show this stuff, but it also comes with one of those. <laughs> what is that called? Oh my gosh. Okay, anyways, this helps to put little indentations in, scoring, all that. Okay, so what else are we going to use besides the adhesives and the tools and the ink? Well, we need a paper trimmer and we need some extra cardstock and extra envelopes. Let me see if I can zoom out without interrupting the camera. There we go. Oh, we zoomed out really far, Rachel. Now we're going to interrupt the camera. <laughs> Again, working with my left hand is a little bit different than working with my right, trying to, trying to manipulate things. We're going to set this ink over here for a minute. The extra cardstock and envelopes. Let me show you the envelopes. Oh, here they are. So I'm bringing in basic white, medium size envelopes. Stylus, thank you, Kathy. I wanted to say stylus. I don't know why I said, no, that doesn't sound right. 
Um, basic white medium envelopes. This is the same size that the kit cards um, create. And so I'll be using those. I'll be using some pearls, although you could really make these cards without the iridescent pearls. But um, that's why I brought in the Take Your Pick tool, because it's easy to apply uh, embellishments with the Take Your Pick tool. And then I've got the basic white cardstock, which is going to become our new card base. So we're taking the kit card bases, and this is one of them. As you can see, the kit card bases come in this um, blue color, uh, the the red and the green. Those colors, by the way, are Granny Apple Green, um, Pretty Peacock, and Real Red. And then there's supplementary colors like Lost Lagoon and Pecan Pie that come in the kit. So we're going to take this Real Red card, card base and we're going to cut it so that it becomes layers instead. The inside is white, the outside is red. We're just going to trim that. We're going to trim it so it becomes five and a quarter by four so that we can get two pieces that size. And those measurements are just a quarter inch smaller than the, um, let's just bend this here, than the, the card base, the typical card base. So let's do a couple of those. Now you're going to get some extra strips here and we're not going to toss those. Those strips are going to be used to help accent some layers. So hang on to those pieces. They're not going to become scrap. Then we're going to take our um, basic white cardstock and this is our eight and a half by 11 basic white cardstock. And, <laughs> and we're going to cut it in half this direction and we're going to score both pieces in that direction. So if we're going to do them both, we might as well score together. So we'll score halfway at four and a quarter. That's why we cut this at four because half of eight and a half is four and a quarter, which is a quarter bigger, and half of five and a quarter, which is what we cut this to, is five and a half, which is a quarter inch bigger. And now we're cutting both of them, so we have two card bases, like that, okay? All right, so we can make two cards from one of the kit cards. How many kit cards do we have again? We have nine. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to take and just show you how to make um, one of the styles from one card base, um, so it turns into two cards. And then I'm going to show you a sample of what I've done with the green and what I've done with the blue in that same uh, pattern. But then the other card bases um, and layers are going to get cut in a slightly different way. Because you actually, you see this little white layer here? It looks like this when you get it. You don't just get nine of these, you get 12 of these in this kit. So I decided to cut some of them in half and leave some others more whole. I am going to trim this down a bit. I'm going to trim off a half of an inch on one side, making this now five and a half inches in this direction. So we've got our five and a half inches here. I'm sorry, four and a half inches. Did I say five and a half? Four and a half inches here and a half of an inch here. Um, and then this is going to become a new little layer here. Now the cards do have sentiment sections on them, like there and there and there. But we're going to use those on the other cards, okay? So, because you get 12 of those. <laughs> so we might as well use those with the other style because we're going to do one, two, three, four, five. We're going to do six in this style, two in red, two in green, two in blue. And then we're going to do the other, let's see, 18 take away six is 12. We're going to do the other 12 cards in the other style. I'm looking blurry today. Um, I hope that that's not the case for everybody. Maybe go out of the live and come back in. Not sure. Oh, another tool sorry I forgot to grab this one is the bone folder you see how my cardstock is kind of opening up way too far here we're going to use our bone folder and we're going to crease it so it doesn't open up as far it lays flatter you'll also see that with your cardstock and i did not trim this too exactly did i um, that with your cardstock you can see the front and back layers on this side 
but on this side you cannot. So I'm going to make this the front of my card and we'll do the same thing. We'll uh, crease this a little bit tighter and there's where we can see the front and back. So this is going to become the front of the card. Actually, I had I really I, I cut bad, didn't I, you guys? I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not as, as, as exact as normal. Okay, so here are our layers. We've got our four inch by five and a quarter, my four inch by five and a quarter. And then we've got two of these. So let me grab, I'll just, you know, I won't finish two cards at the same time. I'll just show you. This one's gonna go to that one and this one's gonna go to this one. It's already cut. Okay, now we're gonna take and bring in some trees. And so for this card, I decided to do two extra trees instead of three because we're going to put our sentiment overlapping. On these cards, you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three extra trees. But on this one, we're just going to have two and that will save some more, more of our trees for other cards. Okay. So let's go ahead and add our adhesive. Another adhesive, sorry, forgot to mention, is my seal. My seal adhesive is a, a nice one to just kind of run. It's like a tape runner adhesive. And look at this, you guys. I'm using my left hand as the dominant one. <laughs> so there is my first layer. I'm going to use the other base because this one was not cut very well. There we go. So that goes right on here with an eighth inch border all the way around because an eighth and an eighth equal a quarter. And that was the difference. So there's our card base. This uh, card base is going to go up a little higher. So before we add that with dimensional adhesive, we're going to stamp on it. We're going to bring in, and I'm just going to check my other ones here. We're going to bring in a stamp. Um, let's see here. I've got my word stamps. Oh, here's a tree. We can use that one or this one or this one. We have plenty of trees to choose from. Here are my words. And we also need the snowflake. So let's go ahead and use this tiny tree. Why not? And we'll ink that up. We're going to lay this sentiment strip where we want it to go on our card. It's going to go kind of in that spot. So I'm going to take this tree and I'm going to bring it down right around there and just stamp it. And then my snowflake stamp is going to get inked up and stamped in the other areas. So let's just kind of lay out the trees where I want them to be. I think I'm going to do it like this, which means I could probably put a snowflake kind of in the middle there and maybe right over here. Okay, so and we could do more. Um, in fact, let's do one. Let's do one on the sentiment strip. Let's put that right off to the right hand side. So we have just some random snowflakes. And now let's grab our ink and do um, let's do warm wishes. How does that sound? Warm wishes. So we have our warm and we have our wishes. We're going to stamp that along the white strip. I'm going to put this against the red so you can see better, you guys. In fact, you know what? <laughs> Rachel forgets this all the time. Let's just use our stamp and pierce mat because that creates a cushion underneath your photopolymer stamps. Your photopolymer stamps do not come with a cushion like red rubber stamps do. So it's nice to have a little bit of a cushion underneath when you're stamping. Warm, and here's the wishes. We'll stamp that one right next to it. I'm gonna give this a bit of a curve because it's not laying flat for me. So stamp that there. Okay, we've got all of our stamping done. Unless we wanted to do some stamping on the inside of our card and I'm choosing not to. You could totally do that if you want to. You could put some trees in there or whatever. Now we can go ahead and layer this up. So we're going to grab our dimensionals and I'm going to put one in each corner except for actually this corner. This is the corner. Uh, no, it's the other corner. So I'm going to put one there, one there, and one there. And then this corner 
is where I kind of want to, um, let's see here, because I want dimensionals on this too, and I don't want it to be double dimensionally, double dimensionally when it goes through um, the mail, because that makes it too thick, right? So it does make a difference, Shirley, you're right, the mat. She's saying the mat does make a difference, especially with um, solid image stamps. Okay, so let's take and put our dimensional right here. We'll just kind of set it maybe behind that tree. There we go. Okay, now we'll peel off the backings on our dimensionals. I'm so glad you guys came. I'm so sorry that I have been not as crafty lately. Please forgive me. This is going to get centered onto our card front. And then we're going to take our sentiments, sentiment strip, and we're going to put dimensionals on the back side of that. And I'm just going to put them right here and here. And this little end is going to come off the edge. So we really don't need to have uh, um, anything under that or it's going to kind of throw things off mathematically with dimensionals. <laughs> so there we have that. And when you squish this card down into an envelope, you have a dimensional here, here, and here, and nothing's double layered. It just makes it easier to mail. But when you open it, it looks like it's two dimensionals high, if that makes sense. And then these guys can go on with dimensionals. So we will stick a couple behind our biggest tree. Our biggest is going to be more of the focal point and be in front. And then we have another tree that's going to go behind. Sorry, I'm looking at my... No, the bit... Nope, I lied. The, the smallest tree is going to go in front. So we're going to put that off to the side there and put a mini dimensional at the very top. I lied. Sorry, didn't mean to. Okay, so then they're going to get layered like this so that the little tree overlaps the big one because I wanted the big one more in the middle of the card. So let's go ahead and lay that down. And I'm just eyeballing where it should go by bringing the other tree right next to it. And it kind of gives me a good idea of where that first one should go. And then this one, again, it has some room here to overlap this tree. And that's just going to go down here and complete that little trio on the left-hand side. So we have one, two, three trees over there and a couple over there. And then we can balance it out with some embellishing. So we can take our pearls. These are our iridescent pearls. They're so beautiful. They have just a little um, sheen to them so that it looks more multicolored depending on which cardstock you're using. Yes, I am um, crafting more. I'm resting my hand. I see some of your comments. And some of you are concerned, and I want to tell you that I'm not doing any heavy lifting. The therapist actually wants me to be manipulating my hands, and I am progressing quite well, he said. So I just visited um, my physical therapist yesterday. We'll stick one there. And he said, wow, you've really got some um, good movement in it. And I said, well, I have been paper crafting. <laughs> so it's healthy for me that way too. Not, not just mentally, but it's, it's been a good thing for recovery. So, And there is our finished red card. We have our real red version. We have a peacock, pretty peacock version. And we have a um, granny apple green version. So let me show you those. So I would do two of these. And then I would do two of these. And I'm using the same trees for each of my two greens, each of my two reds. So I, you, see, can, you can see I've saved all those pieces for when I'm ready to finish those off. And then I would do two of these. And again, you can change out your trees. You can make, um, if you live in a warmer area, put your tropical tree in there just for fun, right? Throw it in there with all these other ones. <laughs> all right, so there's that. We have those three times two. So we got six cards in our minds done. <laughs> Next, we're going to bring in another style. So now, remember I told you that we had 12 of certain pieces. We had 12 of the little labels, the sentiment labels, and we have 12 of those 
um, la the card layers, the these layers here. So we're going to now cut these pieces in half. We've already used six of these on the other six cards that I just shared with you. Imagine six of them are done. So we had six more of these left. If we cut them in half, we'll be able to make 12 more cards. Thanks, Shirley. She's enjoying this so far. This piece is five inches, so we want to cut this to two and a half inches like so. The trees are you know, positioned differently on each piece, but you have the ability to move your other layering trees wherever you'd like, right? So that's that. We've also got 12 of these layers or labels, which we haven't used yet. So you have plenty of those, one for each card. Again, lots and lots of trees, lots of tree choices. So I'm just gonna put these out here. And then we also have um, a full sheet of eight and a half by 11 that we're gonna cut the same way we did before. And we're gonna cut um, this one down. Uh, <laughs> Creative Cindy just said that my video went into commercials. Oh, I'm so sorry. They, they've done some changes with YouTube and I'm trying to figure out how to make it so that I don't have ads in the middle of my videos and I apologize I thought I did it right today last week I must have done it right so I will work on that in the future again it's a recent change with YouTube and um, I prefer to not have them in the middle I like having them at the end and at the beginning so I apologize okay so now let's go ahead and take and score both of these at the same time And then we're going to cut both of them at the same time. It's more efficient. So how many of you are beginning crafters and you're watching for the first time? I would love to hear from you. If you are, chime in and let us know and tell us what you think of this kit. We have lots of different kit options. In the online store, you can go to um, stampyourartout.com and then you can click on the shop button and you can see all the products that we have available in our online store. Let's fold this one flat too. Okay, so we have two card bases. We have two card layers. Oops. We have two label pieces. We have two of these and we have lots of trees to choose from. Um, let's do again since uh no you know what let's just do a palm tree for fun let's do a palm tree and i'll do one of these and then we'll do these two on another card i can throw this over in my extras pile okay so here we have what we need for this card let's do the same thing that we did where we're going to add this layer with our seal adhesive and some of you are saying you haven't used your multi-purpose liquid glue yet. Well, we're going to use that next. We're going to add um, a layer behind, a little strip behind this half layer that we trimmed down. So that's where this adhesive will come in handy. I'm sorry, this adhesive, the multi-purpose liquid glue. So we're going to shake it just to get it to the tip. And I have to squeeze, I have to be really cognizant to not squeeze with my middle finger. That is the top. So we're going to put it along the left hand side. And we're just going to do a real thin line of glue there. I like to use the precision tip bottle. Um, where are my greens? I have some green cut layers. I don't have them in front of me, but I will grab this piece here. I have a couple that I did from before because we have a green sentiment strip here, so we want to use green. So I'm just going to add this right behind so that about an eighth of an inch sticks out like that. This glue is easy to move when you first put it down, and then it starts drying pretty quickly. So that's the advantage to that. Plus you can get it into small places. So if you'd rather use multi-purpose liquid glue, yes, I can cut with this hand too. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm sorry, that thing is still up there. Um, so that is um, how you do that layer. And we'll save that one for the other one. We're gonna stamp on this piece, but we're gonna stamp off to the right. 
because this part is going to get tucked under on our card. I have to grab my finished ones over here so I can make sure I'm doing them right. Okay, so we're going to do warm wishes on this one also. We'll bring our ink back in, our Lost Lagoon ink. Lost Lagoon goes really well with Pretty Peacock, if you did not know. They're um, good colors to match together. Uh, also Pool Party. Pool Party looks stunning with those two colors. Okay, so we're just stacking these two stamp images, but they're off to the right-hand side of the label. And now that will get tucked under our card like so. Let's add a tree. And, in fact, let's just use that same tree again. Um, oh, you know what? I had way too many trees. I don't need... I don't need two per card on this one. I only need one. So let's do, let's do the cactus on this one. And we'll do, we'll save those for later. Okay. All right. Where did my ink go? Ink, ink, ink. I just had it. Here it is. Okay. So we're going to take and ink up our tiny tree. We're going to lay this where we want it to go. And then our little tree can go right next to it in an area where we think it looks pretty balanced. Then we'll put this up on dimension. Oh wait, we need, we need some snowflakes too. So let's put this back down, lay it where it's gonna go. And yes, we're gonna add snowflakes, even though we're, have, we have a cactus in our, in our midst. <laughs> um, we'll put, let's see here, we'll do one here and we'll do one maybe over here. Okay. Now, let's put this up on dimensionals. Here they are. It's going to be so cute. The cactus is adorable, isn't it? And that's just going to get stuck down like so. All right. Then, this gets put onto our card base. Do you see where our dimensionals are? They're right behind the tree here. So that means we can put dimensionals on the four corners except for the fact that we need to have room to tuck this. So this corner here is actually not gonna get a dimensional right behind it. It's gonna be up a little higher. So just lay that behind. Imagine, we're gonna put it up a little higher. We'll put it right, right about there. And then, in fact, we could probably do like a little tripod looking thing here on the back. Because three are all you need to make the table stand up. <laughs> a table only needs three legs. Oh good, they're all sticky. Okay, so then this can go on here and you can shove it off to the side. So it has about a half of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch on this, this left side here showing for the blue color, the pretty peacock color. And then we'll put adhesive on the back side. You could use the multi-purpose liquid glue or you could use your seal and look at that picked up one of those guys. This gets stuck on the back side like so. And then we use our uh, pearls again. So let's bring those back in. If you don't have the take your pick tool and you can't invest in everything, another way that I used to use my embellishments or pick up my embellishments is I would use my scissors kind of at the side like this and I would just open them a little bit, slide the points underneath and pick it up. And that worked pretty well for me. Let's see, where are we putting those? I'm just peeking at my finished cards. So there's kind of gotten out of the habit of picking them up this way. We're going to do a small, small, and a big on each card. We'll set that one over there. Okay. So this card looks like that in the end. So pretty similar, right? These designs are pretty similar to the look that you get when you complete the cards as intended. We didn't vary them too much. Still had that same similar look. And the finished cards for those styles, I would get um, four of these. I would get four of these, and I didn't put pearls on that one, sorry about that, and I would get 
four of these. We'll put this one in there. There. So then you can see the snowflakes differently. So I would get four of each of these. Four times three is 12. And then we had six others done. So all together we can make 18 cards just from following the directions in this way. Then you're going to have extra trees. Remember I was talking about all the extra trees? I think 13. I think you get 13 extra trees. So if you have extra trees, then what else can we do? We can bring in something called note cards and envelopes. Um, those are pretty, pretty awesome. And the reason why I suggest the note cards and envelopes is because with just the trees left and not a lot of anything else, not layers or whatever, um, and you just want to kind of stick with the kit and the embellishments that we added, then you probably don't want to be bringing in die cuts and all that sort of thing. It's going to cost more than what you need to do, right? But the note cards are mailable in the U.S. So this size card, when folded in half, looks like this, okay? And it comes with envelopes, so you get 20 cards, 20 envelopes. And when you're done creating, your card looks sweet and simple. Now on a larger size card, one that would be this size, that would get pretty lost on there. That's why I'm suggesting the note cards and envelopes. I think that this design, um, this design here, fits better on a slightly smaller base. Again, mailable. Um, uh, here's another design that you can do with it. You didn't, wouldn't have to add snowflakes if you're in the tropical areas. Um, and then another thought is taking all of those extra trees and grabbing your cardstock, instead of buying note cards and envelopes and investing in yet something else, you can still keep this very affordable. Take some of that extra cardstock from your um, basic white cardstock pack. And you can use, and by the way, you can use thick or regular cardstock, but cut them to two inches wide. And then you can add these fun little guys. Let's just do, let's just do this one here. And we'll add that with a couple dimensionals. Before we do, we should probably stamp though, Rachel. Let's do our warm wishes again. I don't know why I'm gravitating towards that, but probably because I'm trying to make them different than my samples that I've already finished. So we'll stamp warm wishes. And really, you can position this wherever you want. You could have your tree below your words or your words below your tree. Let's do some snowflakes on here. Peel off the backing. Where is that going to go? So we'll do a snowflake there, a snowflake there, and maybe one right next to it like that. Okay, and we'll just stick that down there. And we now have a fun little tag for a gift. Oh my goodness, it got blurry on us. What happened? That's so weird. How long has that been blurry, you guys? Hang on, let me try something. Okay, let's go back. My, uh, my camera is, oh good, we're gonna have technical issues today. This is fun. <laughs> let me bring in something dark and see if it focuses. Oh my gosh, yes, bookmarks. We could do bookmarks for some reason. I'm wondering if I'm getting a call. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, you know what? Let's just bring this over. I know, it's still blurry. Something made my, my camera blurry, you guys. Oh my goodness sakes. Okay, let's do this. Let's see if we can fix it. Oh, it, it fixed. I bet that's what happened. I thought I had it on Do Not Disturb, though. <sighs> okay, so here we have our bookmark. <laughs> I'm sorry, our gift tag. <laughs> our gift tag. Because someone said bookmark. So we could do, we could make a bookmarks. But yes, you could have them as little tags on your gifts. And then we have, and you already saw it because I brought them in these punches. If you wanted to get a little more decorative with the tops of your bookmarks, you could punch first. So I believe this is, yep, this is two inches. We'll do the snowflake one. So you just put it into your tag topper punch all the way. Then you punch down. <laughs> 
and you've got this fun little topper to it. Just shove that out of the way. And once you've finished that, then you can stamp your pretty little tag, your gift tag. So, and you could use different tag toppers. You don't have to use the one that has the snowflake. They're, they all look great, don't they? So that's what you could do with your extra 13 trees, either extra note cards or um, some tags. So there's that. Um, I'm gonna take and keep these over here. I have um, some things to tell you guys about as I'm cleaning up my table. I, um, I am part of a fundraising event right now. Um, it's called uh, Stamp Out Breast Cancer. And it's been going on, this is, this is I guess the 14th year. And I think I may have heard about it in the past, but never um, looked into it much. There's all kinds of fundraisers out there. This is one that I got personally invited to help out with though. I am going to bring you over to my computer screen. Let's do um, a good view here. Okay, so I'm going to bring you over here so you can see. Oops, hang on. There we go. So you can see um, Stamp Out Breast Cancer. Um, it's, it's run by a couple, de well, two demonstrators are running two started running it and but it involves a bunch of other Stampin' Up! demonstrators as well so but anyway Celine Kempton you may have heard of her Tammy White um, Sharon Armstrong's also involved uh, this year I think she's coming in but here's the information about it and then there's multiple other demonstrators I wish I knew everybody's name to give them all credit but basically there's an in-person event in um, in Massachusetts right and then there's also the online portion of it. So anybody who donates at least $20 towards Stamp Out Breast Cancer um, will get a tutorial, a bundle of tutorials. And the reason why I got invited to participate and not just, you know, did I venture in, but my stamp set is being used. The Layering Leaves, my uh, Million Dollar Achiever stamp set is being used as the main stamp set. And I'm so honored that they picked that one. Um, so they're doing, they're using that in the in-person event, and then they're also using it in their tutorial bundle. So if you donate towards this fundraiser, and all proceeds, by the way, go towards the American Cancer Society, um, then um, you would get emailed to you, uh, I believe, at the end of October. The event is on the 28th, so it would be sometime around there or shortly after that you would get emailed the bundle of tutorials. So I'm contributing a tutorial to it, and... Uh, just wanted to point that out. I'm going to have that information in my blog post so that you can be involved if you'd like to. Um, let's go back to the desktop for a minute because I have to show you my pretty pumpkin. So it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month this month, but it's also October. When I was going to um, when I was going to the party store to pick up some things to decorate for Halloween, they had these really cute pink pumpkin candles. And I had to buy one um, because of course it would sit on my desk and help remind me to talk about this, um, this fundraising effort that we have, but also because it's stinking cute, right? So let me um, bring in some prizes. The ones that we had last week, so every every week that I go live, we do a drawing. If it's during my online paper crafting classes, we do a drawing for prizes. And um, after live, commenters can win. So I've chosen two winners, one from Facebook and one from YouTube for the after live commenters. Those after live commenters, when your name is called, you get to pick from one of these embellishments. You also get a sheet of glow in the dark, six by six specialty paper. You get a quarter pack of this delightful floral um, designer paper. And then you get eight wobbles. So that was kind of like a really fun multiple, uh, multiple kind of prize. And I'm going to grab my computer screen and show you who the winners were from last week. 
uh, from last week's video. After live commenters on Facebook, we had Diana McNally McCall. Congratulations, Diana, and thanks for commenting. And then on YouTube, we had Laura Zylkowski. Zylkowski. <laughs> You can see I'm trying to do it phonetically. Um, but anyways, um, Laura was the winner on YouTube. So please reach out to me at my email address. I have um, a very itchy nose today. Reach out to me at my email address. It's stampyourartout at comcast.net so that you can claim your prize. Then we have prizes for this week and this week's prizes. So let me bring you back to my desktop. This week's prizes, there's actually quite a lot to choose from. Um, I have finished creating um, with my Halloween stuff uh, now because crafters are always, what, um, usually a month ahead. <laughs> so I have extra um, Halloween papers. I have some more of that specialty glow-in-the-dark paper, and I have some of the Them Bones paper, and that's one prize. Then I have a set of cards that I made with one of our kits collection kits. Um, I had two sets of these. One I already gave out to a Facebook Live winner. Um, and then this is my other set of, uh, I think there's nine here, nine cards. And then it would come with envelopes. So you would get a set of um, cards and envelopes. We already have our winners, yay. And then, so these two people that Trisha has drawn, we have Katie and Lani, or La Lani. Um, we also have, if you really like stamps and you're a new stamper, we have a couple, well, three different stamp sets plus some kit left over. So th these are all kit related. You get choices, you guys. I'm cleaning house. <laughs> and then I had one other kit which is easy to split in half because this kit here, it's called Blossom Wishes, does not come with a stamp set. So this kit can be divided in half. And so um, one winner could get one half and the other winner could get the other half, if you choose that. So those are the choices. <laughs> so Katie and Lanny, um, congratulations to you. Yes, yay, Debbie's saying congrats. And we have, sorry, there's Tony's comment, woohoo! So congrats to our winners. Make sure again that you reach out to me at my email address, which is stampyourartout at comcast.net. I love being back in the swing of things, you guys. It has been so much fun creating. Let me put these back out here for you so you can see them. Again, you would get 18 cards total if you follow the directions that I shared in this video. Let me zoom out. <laughs> if you follow the directions in this video, you can get 18 plus you can get more things like note cards, little gift tags, right? Lots of different stuff that you can create with just one kit. Oops, you can't see that one. There, there we go. All right, what other news do I have for you? I have some new products to show you. So I'm gonna pull those out next. Um, if you wanna take a screenshot of these, you can, but my blog post or my videos are always connected to a blog post at 4 p.m. So I told you, I warned you at the beginning, this is gonna be a little bit later because I need to finish up these cards and photograph them and then add them to my blog post. So at 4 p.m., this blog post will be live. Right now, the description is in the video, um, the YouTube version of the video that's going on right now, and I will transfer that description over to Facebook right after the live is done. In that description is where you're gonna find the link to the blog post. Again, it won't be live for another little over four hours. Um, give me time to finish creating and photograph, edit, blah, blah, blah. The PDF, which will have the measurements and supplies and photos of the projects will also be downloadable and accessible in that blog post. All right, so, <laughs> okay, let me uh, move these off to the side and bring in some new product. I'm bringing in a new product that just came because I wanna show you some goodies that are coming up in November. I didn't buy all of it, but I bought some of it. 
You can already see this beautiful, it's called Glimmer Paper. It's called Three Color Glimmer Paper and it comes in Highland Heather, uh, Petal Pink, and Pretty Peacock. Ooh, you could add this Pretty Peacock color to the cards that we've just done. So there's the Pretty Peacock color. You get two sheets of each. There's the Petal Pink color. It actually looks like our older apricot, doesn't it? And I, I miss that apricot color. And then this is the Highland Heather purple color. So if you're looking for some fun glimmer paper, that will be available November 8th, I want to say. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. This is a fun uh, embellishment pack. And I really didn't realize how large these items were. I thought they were tinier than this, but this is actually perfect. Do you know that we have those beautiful brushed brass butterflies? Well, these are our adhesive back dragonflies and birds. The birds fly in two different directions, and then you've got these uh, the aerial view with the wings spread out of the dragonflies. And they're low profile, just like the brush brass butterflies. So I'm totally excited to be using them on cards because it keeps the postage down, right? Yes, so that's that. And then we also have, or I also have, because again, I didn't buy it all, but I also bought the designer paper. I could not pass up the designer paper. Rachel can never pass up designer paper. Let's see if we can slip that on. This is the designer paper, and we're opening up this for the first time, well, I am, with you. It's called Meandering Meadows, and it's got hand-painted, well, kind of chalked. I think she used pastels, the artist, to design these. So you get four of each of the double-sided designs, and there are 12, I think 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, yep, 12 double-sided designs. So... Here's that one. The back sides or the B sides are not as elaborate, but great for subtle backgrounds, right? So it's nice that there's a choice. It would be horrible if we had these two back to back because then which one would you choose, right? So it's nice to have, if you're choosing to do scenery, you've got scenery on one side and you've got more of a, a neutral kind of background on the other. Floral Fields, they're just stunning, aren't they? Look at that. Oh my goodness sakes. The colors that you get in this packet are Balmy Blue, Basic Black, Blueberry Bushel, Cherry Cobbler, Crushed Curry, Fresh Freesia, oh my goodness sakes, gorgeous, um, Garden Green, Granny Apple Green, um, Highland Heather Lemon Lime Twist, which is that bright um, greenish color up there. Um, then you also get Melon Mambo, Night of Navy, uh, Orchid Oasis, Pecan Pie, Petal Pink, Pumpkin Pie, and Shaded Spruce. Really, there's a ton of colors. You could probably find even more Stampin' Up! colors that they forgot to list. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Those are the designs of the Meandering Meadows pack of papers. And why am I showing these to you now? Because first of all, there's a bunch of this new stuff being shared on the internet anyways, but also because if you want to get in on the starter kit, there's a new starter kit that's, um, not a new starter kit, there's a special starter kit offer that's going on during the month of October. So now through the end of October 31st, you can choose a cheaper kit, or not cheaper, but less expensive kit, so you can get 35% off the 99 price, brings it around 60 some dollars, and you still get to add in there $125 worth of product. That product can be this pre-order stuff that I just showed you, because anything that demonstrators can pre-order typically can be added to a starter kit order, because you're becoming a demonstrator or a discount shopper, whatever you want to call yourself, but you're becoming one of us. And then the other option, because there's two choices for the starter kit this month, so it's either 35% off or it's 35% more product. And the reason why they're doing 35 is because we're celebrating 35 years of Stampin' Up! this year. So 35% more in product means you pay the 99 
plus shipping and tax. I'm sorry, no, shipping's free, plus tax. So 99 plus tax, but then you get, oh gosh, uh, lots more product. You don't just choose uh, 125. I'm gonna find those numbers for you right now. I'm gonna go to my blog. Let's just do that. And we can see it. So if you're at stamp your art out at comcast.net, you can visit any of my blog posts just by clicking on blog. And you can scroll down to the bottom. All the blog posts, by the way, have information on promotions at the bottom of every post. So here is where you can click more for details. And when we go there, it's within one of my posts. It was the, the day that it was announced, I put it in that post. So here we have, and here's the numbers, you guys. 35% more would be $168.75, uh, cents. so $168.75 in the US in product for just $99. Um, free shipping, it's amazing. So good time to join, good time to become a discount shopper. Okay, I think I've covered everything. Um, I hope that you come back next week. I um, have some ideas in mind, I just have to get to creating. Um, but I also have to rest my hands, so we'll see how we do. But yes, I'd love for you to come visit again next week. Don't forget to click on the blog post in about four hours so that you can see um, the photos of the projects. You can download the PDF. You can click on links and shop if you'd like to. Um, by the way, if you are a demonstrator, shop from yourself. Get that discount. Um, if you have a demonstrator, shop from them. Give them your love. All right, so it is going to be, next week is going to be October 18th at 11 a.m. I hope that you'll join me then. Thank you so much to all of you who came with me during the live and joined in on the commenting. Um, a big thank you to those of you who've been watching for a while. A big thank you to those of you that are new and you stuck around. And to Lisa and Trisha, my moderators. You guys, I love you so much. And I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.